Okay, let's learn one more technique before we're done here with uh, flow control. Nested ifs are also very common when you have more than one dimension that needs to be tested when you're uh, evaluating a decision path or a flow, con uh, flow path. So a nested if allows us to test another criteria after the first one. Let's go and uh, create a new Python notebook and show you what this looks like. So let's, uh, let's enter a number. So let's say x equals int input. There we go. Enter um, or pick a number, whatever you want to say. Then down here, let's start with, let's see if that number is, let's test two things. Let's see if the number is even, or sorry, let's test if it's odd, and then let's see if it's divisible by three. And use a nested if statement to evaluate both criteria at one. Before I forget, let me call this chapter 4.4. .4. Okay. All right. So let's say uh, if x now, do you remember what the operator is to return a remainder? Uh, if not, here it is. It's called mod and it's the percent sign. So if x mod 2 equals 1, that means it's an odd number, right? If we divide by 2 and there's 1 left over, it doesn't matter what the number is, and there's 1 left, then that means that it's an even number. So let's start with that one and get it working. Uh, let's add our else here. Uh, and let's say print the number is even. And here the number is odd. Let's make sure we get this working. Let's grab an input. Let's put in a three. Enter. Whoops. Not code. Easy. Let's try that one again. Oh, what did I do wrong? I'm trying to set x mod 2 equal to 1. Remember, it's double equals for the comparison. I'm just checking to see if it's equal to 1. So don't forget that part. Um, oh, and then else, and I forgot my colon. Perfect. I'm going to leave these errors in there so you can see me debugging uh, for when you run into the same things. All right. Enter a number. Let's put in 3. The number's odd. Perfect. Let's run it again. Make sure this is working. Enter a number. Any number we want, as long as it ends in an even number, the number is even. Beautiful. Okay, let's take this to the next level then. What I'm going to do is uh, let's go inside this first if statement. If it's if mod 2 equals 1, and we're going to add another if right here. If x mod 3 equals 0, that means it's divisible by 3 with 0 remaining. If that's true, then we're going to push this print out to be evaluated inside of this nested if statement. It's nested inside of that one. So this if statement needs to be entirely encapsulated in this flow control right here, in this block. All right. So this else lines up with that if. This if is going to have its own else right here. So we're going to print a couple of different things here, depending on how it's evaluated. So the number is odd. If it's divisible by 3 with the remainder of 0, that means that the number is odd and divisible by 3. If it goes right here, then we're saying the number is odd because it's still inside this outer block right here. So we know it's still odd because it's not down here in the false area of this criteria. But we say and not divisible by 3 because this else is the false criterion for this comparison operator right there. All right, let's put another, uh, let's just copy this down here to this print area. And how do we change this one? We simply say the number is even and divisible by three, even and not divisible by three. All right, let's run that. Let's put in a two. The number's even and not divisible by three. Perfect. Let's run it again. Let's test it with something much bigger. The number's even and not divisible by three. Let's test it again. Let's get every criterion. Let's go with one that's odd. The number is odd and not divisible by 3. Now we need to pick a number that is divisible by 3. How about, what's the number that's even and divisible by 3? How about 30? There we go. Even and divisible by 3. Test it with 32. Even and not divisible by 3. Perfect. So, you might be asking, okay, if I can nest ifs inside of ifs, how many ifs can I nest deep? Um, honestly, with Python, I'm not sure. It's probably unlimited, though. I've 
I've never found a programming language that's limited me to by I, I you know with the number of nested ifs I can have. So I can put another if block right there, there. But every time I do one, I'm I'm expanding my number of outcomes by an exponent of two, right? Because I keep adding another level of true and false, which means if I have another level, another question I need to ask, is it even? Is it divisible by three? Is it prime? Let's say now I've expanded my outputs from four to eight because each one of these has to have their own if statement inside. Now you might be asking, well, okay, isn't there another way to do this? You could actually do this same thing using our comparison operators we learned previously. So, uh, for example, if uh, x mod 2 equals 1, and I can copy this right here, or cut and paste it, then the number is odd and divisible by 3. And then I could have an elif right here and copy this criterion and say not equal to zero. Now I've handled those two criterion, but I've doubled, I have to use the and uh, operator right here. Uh, then I can keep expanding this elif. x not divisible by 2 and is divisible by 3 then it meets that criterion oops I got extra space right there oh it's not else if it's elif there we go elif um, actually right here I don't even need the last one if it doesn't meet all those I can simply say else the number is even and not divisible by 3 Okay, so what I'm what I want to know is if you oops I forgot don't don't forget this. I want to check and make sure that you get oh gosh undo right there. Okay, enter that. Put in a number. Whoops, number. Numbers odd not divisible by three. Perfect. I I just want you to see that a nested if uh, you can accomplish the same thing with an elif. You can accomplish same, similar things by using nots, uh, ands, and ors. There's lots of different ways to do the same thing. So in your assignments in class, I'm, I'm not going to grade you on whether or not you do it the same way I do. Because with programming, you find there's lots of ways to be creative and do the, accomplish the same task in different ways. Over time and with experience, you learn how to do things in the way that is more efficient, faster, fewer lines of code, more meaningful to you. Um, but anyway, that's enough for chapter four in uh, flow control and decision making.